Hey there, everybody. This is Brendan here with Common Motor. That's common-motor.com on the internet. And today we're going to show you how to set the ignition timing on this CB175. The same process is going to apply to the CL and SL175 as well as the CB and CL200. So stay tuned. What I have here in my hand is a set of ignition points, and this happens to be for our, our CB175 here. And all points are essentially is an on and off switch that open and close, causes the ignition coil to fire the spark plugs at the right exact moment in the engine so everything runs great. Now, ignition timing is super important because when timing is spot on like it's supposed to be, the engine starts easy, it runs well, and you can actually take your bike to the top RPM at full redline. When it's off, all kinds of other things happen with the rideability and drivability of the bike, so it's important that it's done. Even more so, it has to be done every 1,500 miles. And I know that seems like a short interval in terms of card miles, but on bike miles, it's actually a good bit of distance, usually about once a year. Uh, now, before you do ignition timing, we have to do some other things. It's also good to change your oil at 1,500 miles and clean the oil filter and do a cam chain adjustment as well as a valve adjustment first. Ignition timing is kind of the last part of this uh, tune-up equation to get your bike back on the road. So here's our, our uh, rotor on the engine and it has some important information that we need to know uh, when setting the timing. Uh, first is this little piece right here. That is the uh, index mark and that's what everything gets referenced to, the index mark. Uh, the rotor turns counterclockwise. There's an arrow that indicates counterclockwise. And then we also have this F mark and this T mark. Uh, the F mark is the fire mark, which means this is when the spark plug fires, and the T mark indicates top dead center, uh, where you would also adjust the valves. And then we also have this other little tick mark we made in reference for doing the cam chain adjustment. You can check out our other video that shows that whole process. So when this mark lines up with the index mark right there, will be the place that spark plug fires. And that's how we set the ignition timing, is when those two marks line up. When Honda built the 175s and 200s, uh, they sourced their ignition points from two different manufacturers. And each of those manufacturers has a physically different style of points. Now, they work the same way, they perform the same way in the bikes, but they're physically different in how they're made. And the plate that they mount to is also physically different. So it's important to know which style or manufacturer you have so you can get the right ones for your bike because it could be one of two variations. Now this didn't happen on all the other models of bikes, but on, on the 175 and 200s it does. One style of points, I call it the bigger points, are made by a company called Nippon Denso. Uh, there also was a clone equivalent made by a company called Toyo, you might see in some of the microfish references. So Nippon Denso points are larger and have this big kind of rocker on them. The other brand of points was made by Hitachi. Hitachi points are physically smaller in size, the rocker is smaller, and they have the small little cam adjustment screw on the side so it makes opening and closing the point gap a little bit easier. Again, either one is fine, it's just important for you to identify what style or what brand manufacturer point you have in your bike so you get the right ones when you're doing a tune-up. Now, regardless of the style of points, they adjust in the same manner, the timing is done in the same process, it's just do I have version A or do I have version B? And that's it. Our points uh, cover is off and uh, what we have here is a single set of points which is relevant because uh, the 175 and 200s have a 360 degree crankshaft and that point triggers every time the piston's up uh, versus let's say a 350 or 360 that has a set of points on two a left and a right specific uh, and that has to do with it being a 180 degree crankshaft. Uh, so it's really easy of the 175 and 200s to get the set. 
Uh, in our case, uh, on our particular bike, this is a set of the Hitachi points. As we pointed out earlier, you could have a Hitachi or a Nippon Denso style. And the screws on these are a little bit uh, chewed up. I'm going to go ahead and take the screws out and change them up to Allen head bolts. But I'm going to take the plate off and show you the advanced mechanism back here because I want to talk about that. This is our advanced mechanism, and uh, on, on these 175, 200 advanced mechanisms, there's actually two lobes on the cam. Now you can see how it kind of ramps up here, and then it ramps up on this side. Uh, we go to set the point gap, we're gonna try to set it right here at the highest spot uh, on uh, the, point, the point lobe here, or this cam lobe here, so you can see it kind of move up. And so we're gonna set it about here, and then 180 from there. Uh, roughly, it's where the end of that a uh, little uh, weight kind of ends. That's about where the uh, the high spot is right there. So this set of points is used, but they're in, in good shape, and we can uh, use them again. I would recommend uh, taking the uh, the point. It's called the rocker off the shaft here and lubricating it with some grease. And then also we're going to clean the contacts right here. This is actually where the electricity goes is between that little little disc there and that disc there. And the easy way to do that is to take some sandpaper. Fold it in half and kind of get it in between the two contacts and then work the paper back and forth and you'll get the, get the dirt and corrosion off of there. This is kind of a ignition system 101. Basically keep going until we get that nice and clean. So we got our points cleaned up and lubricated and we went ahead and reinstalled uh, the bolts that are Allen head bolts which makes the adjustment process a lot easier than the old JIS screws that are in there. And what I want to do now is I'm going to turn the rotor and set the highest point on this cam to touch that little rocker there on the points. I'm going to use a 12 thousandths feeler gauge or 0.3 millimeters. Uh, the gap is supposed to be between 12 and 16. I like this error on the tight side on, for setting the point, so we're going to go with the 12. And uh, we're basically going to get this feeler gauge in between the points here. You can see how I can wiggle it around. So our, our point gap's a little bit on the wide side. So I'm going to loosen them up and uh, adjust the position. Loose loose. Now these Hitachi points are neat because they have this little eccentric screw here which allow me to close the points and open the points. Not all points have this kind of feature. Actually most don't. You have to kind of just wedge them with the nudge them with the screwdriver. Uh, but this one happens to have it so it's kind of nice. So let's find the spot where that just about there. You know, a little bit of drag, I can feel it. Take my Allen wrench, snug it down, and we'll double check it. It's important that you get it to fit where you get just the slightest amount of drag on the feeler gauge, and that way you know you have the correct gap set. Well, the next step in this, I'm actually going to go set the, the timing which means I'm going to loosen up these two bolts that hold the plate here. I'm going to be rotating the plate left or right uh, to find the proper position to make sure the points open up when our F mark lines up down on our rotor. And we're going to do that with uh, a test light here. And a test light tells us exactly when the point gap is opening. Uh, I'm going to take my alligator clip. I'm going to hook it just there on the end of the bolt. It's very specific that I only have it on the bolt and it doesn't touch the plate or the spring at all. It needs to be just right there on the head of the bolt. I'm going to take the other end here. I'm just going to put in that screw hole here, which is ground. Turn the power on. 
turn the kill switch on and we'll start turning the rotor and we'll see the, uh, the light kick on. And our light is on. What that indicates is we have power running through the coil and then all the way down here to the points and the point gap is open and therefore the light is on. We don't want to dilly dally. We want to make uh, our adjustment pretty quick because our coil is energized. If you're going to take your time to make some more adjustments, or you're not sure of the position, go ahead and turn off the kill switch so you don't have power running through the system unnecessarily. But we're going to make this fast. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on. I'm going to turn my rotor counterclockwise. I'm going to find the spot where the points are going to close. That means the coil is charging. And I'm gonna to try to find the place where the light just kicks on. Should be coming up here any second now. Somewhere around right there. You did see a little flash before. Right there. So that was the place where our light kicked on and our F mark is just a little bit past our index mark. Our timing is pretty close right now. We're gonna make a slight adjustment so everything lines up perfect. So I'm rotating the engine again, and this time I'm just gonna bring the mark up to the index mark right there lined up. And I'm gonna mess with my points plate now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I loosen up this bolt. I'm gonna loosen up this bolt now. Now I'm just gonna grab this plate and I'm gonna turn it and find the place where the light just kicks on. Right there. Didn't take very much. If I go back, it's off by a hair. Let's go right there. I'll hold it in position. Tighten down my first bolt. Tighten down my second bolt here. Yeah, we're still making contact. Great. I'll go back down to the rotor. I'm going to turn it one more revolution to see if everything lines up perfectly. Uh, moving my test light down here to the bottom. I have the power off. I'm about to kick it back on here. Power is on. The light is still off. And let's just very slowly creep up on the F mark here and see when the light kicks on. Hopefully it's when everything lines up. Like that. And the last thing I want to do is I'm going to put a little blob of grease right here on the points cam because that's what rubs on that point follower. And we want to make sure it stays nice and lubricated. Went spinning and riding down the road. Do that. There's another degree to which you can check the ignition timing on the bike for accuracy. It's called dynamic timing and it's done with a strobed timing light. Uh, looks kind of like a laser gun here. There's all kinds of these out there. And this was more common in the old school automotive world uh, back in the 70s when these bikes were built. So uh, if you have one of these, you can totally check the timing with it, what the engine at idle speed warmed up and see if your timing marks are where they need to be. However, we find that the method with uh, the test light, doing it statically, is fairly accurate and usually accurate enough for the average guy rolling down the street. This concludes our ignition timing setup on this CB175. Again, this applies to the other 175s, the CL and SL, along with the CB200 and CL200. Again, we want to emphasize how important this is to be done every 1,500 miles as part of the standard tune-up process in conjunction with the oil change, filter clean, cam chain adjustment, and valve adjustment. If you do them all together on that regular service interval, your bike will always run at its peak performance, which is going to make it a lot more fun to ride around. As always, this is Brendan with Common Motor. It's common-motor.com on the internet. Thanks for watching. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe to our newsletter via our website. And of course, down below, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and we will see you next time.